Welcome to another edition of Run, Jump, Chuck. I'm Mossy. He's Robbo. We've just had a week off, Robbo. What did you get up to, mate? Mossy, I caught up on my washing, caught up on a bit of sleep, and caught up with some people I uh, like to call my family. I hadn't seen them for a little while, so that was great. But, geez, I missed it, and I can't wait to get my teeth stuck into a bit of uh, athletics action again this weekend. What about yourself? Mate, I got my teeth stuck into a fair amount of cake, buddy. I've put it, put it up a Have little you? bit. So, uh, yeah, got to get out back out there to another park run. Looking forward to, uh, to that this week. Now, mate, uh, last week we had uh, Adelaide, Track Classic. Gee, it was hot down there, wasn't it? They turned on an absolute scorch. Um, <laughs> it, look, it feels like a long time ago now. We've actually we've turned over a new month, as you can see here from our sweat Sydney calendar. It's now March. Uh, that was in February. But, yeah, it was a stinker. Uh, you were alright, you were in the air conditioning, I was down there at ground level sweating it up, uh, interviewing the athletes, but wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Uh, some great action there once again. Well, let's look at some of the highlights that uh, you've chosen out. Obviously, every week we go for a run, a jump, and a chuck. It would have been hard with a run this week, Robbo. What did you come up look, with? Look, Mossy, uh, just have a look here. This is the uh, the guys from the 4x400 relay. Now, they have the national championships down there. That's the Victorians, all in the headbands. Uh, they came up to me before and said, we want the naked runners headbands to help us win. And what did they do? They went ahead and won it. And watch out this guy here. He'll come on a screen in just a moment. Love the point. Look, he's loving it too. He says, where do I get my own headbands? As well, yeah, that was great, and then we got to get the chance to catch up with these boys for a quick chat afterwards, too. Victorians in the 4x400 meters, and it looks like we got five naked runners headbands. But a quintet of head bandits. We're going out there with the aim to get out in front, and Dougie set it up so well. Uh, we listened to your advice as well, wearing these bad boys out on the uh, on the warm up track proudly. We're getting a few odd looks, but really it was just jealousy, and you know, tried to bring it home as strongly as we could. Well, Robert, absolutely stoked to see the naked runners headband still charging on. Performance enhancing, though, where hopefully uh, Wada won't be uh, looking too far into that. Now, over in the field, mate, uh, you actually had a fair bit of time over there in the field, and especially around the sand pit. <laughs> I ducked over there uh, while you were, and Ollie were hard at work calling the live stream. Uh, I ducked over there. The live results went down. So uh, what do you do in that situation? You take your camera, you head up to the back straight, and you uh, watch, watch what's happening and unfolding with the women's long jump. Look, Chelsea Jench, as we've mentioned, uh, Brooks Stratton. It's actually Jench. Jench. Sorry, well, mate. We'll get her on the show. Maybe you get her in the car. <laughs> yeah, there um, you go. Big fans of the women's long jump this year. Those two have been battling it out. This was another great battle, but it was Brooks Stratton's night. And you can see here as we roll the tape, uh, this was the winning yeah. jump. And it was huge. As you can see there, she covered uh, an amazing distance there. And that was a world champs qualifier. PB, meet record, anything you, know, you want. It was, it was there, 6.73 metres. Perfect, mate and great to see the displacement of the sand going towards the back of the pit, which yes. makes it easier for the officials. So and I, I managed to get a couple of photos over the back there too. One, the famous photo with the sign, as you can see here. We didn't get an interview with Brooke, unfortunately, but we did get her in this Run, Jump, Chuck t-shirt, and she gave us the thumbs up. So great work, Brooke. And what I'm going to do, Mossy, is I'm going to upgrade my Brooke Stratton uh, name bib. Uh, so that one's going to go into the storage, and we've now got the bib that has got the World Chance Qualifier, PB. Uh, it's a world lead as well, Mossy, so Brooke Stratton on fire. Can't wait to see you in action again soon. That's the run, that's the jump. Uh, mate, you made a huge prediction in the charts. So I think you predicted we we're going to get six world qualifiers. Yep. Uh, how do we go over there in the charts? Look, Danny Samuels, she let me down. I've got to say, I was disappointed, and I pointed this out later on to her. She fouled the first one, uh, didn't get measured. It was a big throw as well, but she proceeded on each of her next throws. Uh, to throw over that big red tape. And uh, as we can see here, she looks smooth in the ring, nice and fast with the twists and turns, and she just threw big con consistently. Uh, and great work. Great to see Danny back on the tour. The plan is, yeah, if I can get consistent at that kind of level, then I hopefully will be in the mix for a medal in Beijing for the World Champs later this year. And uh, what about the big one? Have you got it written on your fridge at home? 68 plus. Uh, I know yeah, that's ticking it, away. It is, in my, it is on my little uh, post-it note uh, wall of goals. So... Yes. Uh, it is, you know, it's within a metre of my PB now, so to, you know, just working through the domestic season and getting consistent, like I said, um, hopefully it will put me in good in good shape later on in the European season for that. Where will we yep. see you next? Queensland Track Classic. Wonderful. Yep. Don't have long to wait. Two weeks till yep. we get to see Danny Samuels again, and you, you promise you'll do yep. six out of six for me this time. Okay. At, a, at a national record. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, all right, sure. Easy. Now, mates, uh, let's uh, turn our attention to the newspapers 
to uh, Twitter, to Facebook, to everything, mate. You've been trawling through things. Yes. What have been some of the highlights uh, for the last couple of weeks? Well, Mossy, uh, there's been lots happening. Uh, even though we missed a, we missed last week uh, without having to stream anywhere ourselves. Over the, the ditch in New Zealand, they had a big meet, the Athletics, uh, over there in Auckland. Uh, the Auckland Athletics Challenge. They don't do... Uh, uh, classics. They do challenges over there. Lots of Aussies in action. And we saw Lissy Duncan take out the women's 1500, which was exciting there. Uh, they've also got their their national championships on in New Zealand this week. So a big shout out and uh, go hard to everyone over there in New Zealand. But Mossy, uh, the state championships, they were all the rage locally. Uh, pretty much every state has has dined out on their state champs. Don't, don't tell me that uh, the ACT had another. They had one. A state champ. That's is, right. When they're a territory, it doesn't know, make sense. I know it great to you, Mossy. They are a territory, yet they continue to call them the state champs. It needs to be looked at. Uh, so they've had theirs. South Australia's had theirs. New South Wales had theirs. Victoria had theirs as well. And a, and a lady by the name of Tamsin Manu was in action. Now, Mossy, did you happen to catch the race? Absolutely, mate. I was uh, on the edge of my seat to see this. Tamsin, such a great... Great stalwart of athletics and uh, had a, a baby last year. Look at her, fresh, back on track. Great to see you there. Good on you, Tams, and double thumbs up to you. Now, excellent uh, to see some of that action out there on the track. Some of the action in the administrative uh, corners of the athletics world here in Australia. Well, they've been working hard at it and they've churned out after many, many months this review. Uh, it's called the Independent Review of Athletics in Australia. A bloke by the name of John Buchanan, he had something to do with cricket a few years ago, coaching the national side. He headed it up. Mossy, I know you've read all 60 pages of it from front to back and front again. Uh, Tell me, what did you make of it, mate? Huge disappointment, Robbo, I have to admit. I did read every uh, 60 pages there. A lot of big sentences, not enough dot points. It's hard for us in this day and age. More, more pictures but, would have been good. I, I liked. Why not? Maybe I, some video. Yeah, and we would expect John Buchanan to be able to do that bit of video analysis. But probably the biggest thing, uh, the bugbear that I have with you, John Buchanan, not one mention of Mossy and Robbo, and not one mention of Run, Jump, Chuck. You've got to pull your act together, and, uh, mate, we'll uh, see how you go. I think it should have been called the Run, Jump, Chuck review. And if more kids can be running, jumping and chucking things in the next 10 years, athletics got a bright, bright future. Talk Absolutely. about one last thing. What about Run, Jump, Chuck and taking that into your backyard? This is Greg Rutherford uh, over there in the UK, uh, Olympic gold medalist. He lives in Milton Keynes, I'm pretty sure. That's where he hails from. And he's been busy recently in his backyard digging out this fantastic little piece here. This is his long jump pit. There's the dogs. Uh, and this is in his own backyard. Mossy, who else has, has been putting in this sort of facilities in their own backyard? Uh, I know that Matt Denny has actually got a, 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 a ring up there in his yep. uh, hometown outside of uh, Toowoomba there. Yep. So he's, he's amongst it. Uh, I don't have anything in my backyard. What about you? I don't either. I hear Sally Pearson, she puts hurdles down her hallway and uh, she needs to hurdle her way to the toilet, to the kitchen. So she has an all hurdling house, uh, hurdling compliant. So it's great to see these athletes really taking the run, jump, chuck to another level and uh, and putting these facilities in their back- backyard. Great Absolutely, stuff. and great to see Greg Rutherford, a, a ginger, ginger, leading the charge. <laughs> now leading the charge for the Australians last year, at uh, the Glasgow Games in the marathon for the females was none other than Jess Trengove. We're huge fans of Jess. We had a chance to catch up with her at the Adelaide Track Classic beforehand. I got her to jump in the car with me. So this are the highlights of In the Car with Mossy with Jess Trengove. So we're in the car with Jess Trengove. Turbo I hear, is this correct? Oh yeah, there's a bit of a joke behind that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So... They used to call me, what was my original well, name? Well, Wikipedia says Trenny, but you know. It's uh, not... <laughs> uh, actually, take a left here. Um, this Turbo came from um, the boys out at the group um, being a bit sarcastic about my lack of surge, and so oh, my, right. my nickname was Surge, and Adam ah. said, look, this isn't, this isn't on. We've got to um, you know, get Jess feeling confident in her ability to to you know, change pace and get the legs turning over quickly. So he yeah. said, her new name's Turbo, turbo. and it's stuck. And you are Turbo, forever. So in a session when I've got to up the pace, it's Turbo. I want to have a chat, uh, firstly, about what it was like running down the chute at Glasgow, knowing you're gonna snag a bronze medal. Yeah, well, it was unbelievable. And I actually, on that home straight, I hadn't looked behind me, so I didn't know what was going on behind me, but based on people's cheers, I thought I must have had a bit of a gap. And just 
before I turned into the shoot, I saw Eloise Wellings do a big fist pump <laughs> and she was almost crying, like the oh. look on her face. And that just made me all emotional. And then I just, I remember thinking in my head, this could be you know, a once in a lifetime experience, you know, um, coming into a Commonwealth Games in a medal position. So I really just tried to enjoy that final straight without backing off the pace. And, um, Sort of had a look up at the clock because I had no idea of my time and to see it was a PB as yeah. well. It just completed. 230, 12, is that right? Yeah. yeah, and then just to cross the line and actually Cody yelled out something and I, I thought he was saying the finish line's up here. So I t put in a little <laughs> search <laughs> to make sure I right actually crossed the line. Yeah. Um, but he just had an Aussie flag, so to be able to hold that Aussie flag, you know, I yeah. thought that was just something the gold medalists got to do, oh, so no. I was really pumped. And then, you know, Michael Shelley and having people like Steve Monaghetti there oh, no. um, at the finish, it was... Uh, well, I don't know the pecking order, is it, as far as your brothers and sister, where do you sit? Well, I'm the eldest and then yep. goes Abby and then Jack, but Abby's always been a lot well, since the age of about 12 overtook me she's always yeah. been sort of taller and um and then jack overtook both of us so yeah. the pecking order doesn't line up with height <laughs> but um <laughs> there have been a few yeah sibling battles in the backyard over basketball and yeah. table tennis and whatnot it used oh, to be table tennis i know oh, except jack the one time i was actually on par with him because we sort of get it out at christmas i was pumped i was you know, not too far off and um and he revealed he'd been playing left-handed the whole time so he smashes me off the court but anyway <laughs> yeah it was awesome to jump in the car with jess there and uh mate uh if anyone if you can just tell all your mates about it but go and watch it on youtube we've got the extended highlights uh, and the podcast which will be coming very very soon and don't forget if you can subscribe to us on youtube like us everywhere and tell your mates all about us uh, okay time now to turn our attention to uh, robo's run jump chuck of the week it is my favorite segment in the history of mankind what have you got for us this week champ look mossy this is very special we speak about running jumping and chucking what about stair running now this is a whole subculture of running running which is out there and I've been following this a little bit in the last couple of years. Now we saw recently on the Gold Coast uh, a new event up there, the Sea to Sky Q1 Stair Challenge. It's a massive Q1 tall building called the Q1 and, and we sent Adam Ryan from Stair Climbing Australia to capture the action. Let's have a little look at it. Stair Climbers, Adam Ryan here from Stair Climbing Australia and behind me is the entry to the Q1 Tower Stairwell here on the Gold Coast. Our elite race is about to start. Yep, it's in the Hurt Locker time now. Mark Bourne shouldn't be too far away. Mark's not too far away, and you'll be able to see the speed in which he climbs. It is going to be fast. Mark Bourne absolutely blind, still running on the 76th floor. This is powerful. This is what elite stair climbing is. He is one of the greatest. And you've seen him firsthand how hard he hurts in the middle of an elite race. Okay, I'm on the 77th floor. That doorway behind me is probably the most rewarding doorway to exit after climbing 77 stories and 1,330 steps. Vaughan has just created a race record here in a time of six minutes, 45 seconds. But also announced that Kim Hamilton has taken out the elite women's race in a time of 10.03, climbing the uh, 1,330 steps of Gold Coast stair climbing glory. Happy climbing, stair climbers. So all the stair climbers out there, including Adam Ryan, we salute you. Well, the next stop on the tour, Robbo, is the Queensland Track yep. Classic. But there's plenty going on. It's starting tonight uh, with the, the Queensland State Championships. We've got the IPC World Grand Prix as well, mate. There's so much going on. It's going to be hard for you to pick out uh, your run, jump, chuck, but there's plenty going on. Look, I'll have a crack at it, Mossy. Uh, yeah, that, that IPC Grand Prix, that's going to be sensational. Speed Demons, and this is the cream of para-athletes in Australia. Speed Demons uh, of the likes of Evan O'Hanlon, Chad Paris, Scotty Reed, and we might see some world records fall here. Uh, that's in the ambulant 100 metres, so that's going to be a cracker to watch. That's kicking off from 5 p.m. local time. We'll be out there doing the live stream. Starts a little bit later, but Mossy, running wise, Sally Pearson, it's hard she's, to go past. She's isn't back. It? You'll be able to watch her in action actually Friday night. She'll be in the heats of the 100 metres and the hurdles. So this is her making her 
debut this season over the hurdles. I've mentioned how she's been hurdling up and down the hallway at home. Now she gets a chance to do it in a lane, in a big event, and uh, it's going to be a cracker. So Sally Pearson in action in not one but two events, but it's the women's 800. You can know, I, so can I just go there? You know yeah. we've got the princess of the pit. I'm just going uh, Sally Pearson, your highness of the hurdles. There you go. Well, just hurdles can be high there. as well. So Absolutely. Works on a lot of levels. Very good, Mossy. Well played. Occasionally. So, uh, women's 800 though, Brittany McGowan, I want to show you a little bit of footage from last year, Mossy. This is uh, Brittany McGowan, uh, what was later known as the most important race of her career. Uh, she, she just beats Kelly Heverington here, the Victorian. This was her PB, and uh, 201, and she, you know, she has got a lot of improvements to do. She's already talking up trying to na nail this Australian uh, national record. So it's going to be exciting to see what form she's in. That's going to be one of the races of the meets. In terms of the run, lots going on, but those are my highlights. I think all Brittany needs, because she's got the run, jump, chuck uh, shirt. Yes. Okay, she's got our blessing, but all she needs is a headband, Robbo. So maybe that's Poss a, ch a challenge for you, mate, to uh, get, get one. a uh, naked runner's headband coming straight to you, Britt McGowan. Now, over there in the jumpers, mate, we have some of the best-looking blokes in the world, yes. not just in athletics, but definitely in the world, who will be jumping into pits and uh, leaping over bars. Yes, this is going to be great. A couple of locals in particular I'm looking forward to seeing. Jug Crowther, Robbie Crowther, took the win at the Hunter Track Classic earlier this season. He's going to be in action. Disappointing uh, for him over in Perth on his last start, but he's coached up there. It's his home track. Gary Bourne will be there trackside yelling out instructions. Hopefully he doesn't need any of them. He just sails 8.50, no dramas. And in the chuck, mate, so with the discus. Actually, before we get to the chucks, oh. what about the high jump? Still sticking oh, with the high sorry, jump. Mate. And what about this fella? Look at that photo there, Mossy, if you don't mind. Yeah, it gets me going, that's for sure. And uh, that's Nick Boyich. If you haven't seen him yet, he is the self-professed world's tallest man in athletics. Uh, well, some of his mates call him that anyway. He's going to be looking to come out and hopefully get himself a, a, a nice opener and a world champs qualifier as he goes. So lots happening with the locals in the jumps. Perfect. And over here we've got the discus, mate. Yep. Uh, we've got a huge uh, round of uh, people going up there. We've got Danny Samuels. We've got Julian Rock. We've got uh, Matt Denny. I know they're going to be competing, obviously, in the men's and women's, but I was wondering, it'd be good to get Julian Ruck up against Danny Samuels. They're sort of throwing about the same distance does, at the moment. It does happen. It happens at the hunt. I'm not sure, being the state champs, they might not be able to have that flexibility oh, come this, on. this time. But I'm all for it. I'm, I reckon they totally should do that because they will end up working out, like you said, about the same sort of distance, 64, 65, 66 if you want to go big. So... Um, Let's see what they do up there. Maybe we can uh, have, a, have a bit of sway with the organisers and get that happening. But can't wait to see them chucking the dinner plates up there in Brisbane. Well, guys, that's all we've got time for. Thanks for everyone who's joined us on Meerkat. Uh, don't forget, if you can subscribe, just click down there, do all the liking, everything. And we'll, why don't you grab yourself a Run, Jump, Chuck t-shirt. Here's some of the other cool kids out there that are bearing them. Look, Mossy, you wouldn't be a run, jump, chuck without finishing off with some sort of talent. Oh, and thanks, I, mate. I, I got, oh. Well, I've got to say, yeah, you're very talented yourself, but uh, the talent's dried up a little bit. It was all it was, Initially, it was called Athletes Got Talent, and I take my guitar and I take my instruments and I try and get some athletes to unearth some talent amongst the athletes. It's been very dry. I don't know whether they're too focused on their uh, training at the moment. I think that Lissy Duncan just set too high a standard. Probably that it. was true. Everyone said no chance. So we've given a couple of CEOs from the state uh, organisations a crack. Uh, they were okay, but uh, we thought, let's show it out to the coaches. And so uh, one coach that we managed, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, scared. He was keen to have a crack. And uh, we take you out tonight with Coach Adam Diddick from Team Tempo and his version of that great old classic song, Wild Thing. And as I always say, Robbo, it's a simple thing, athletics. Run, jump, and chuck. chuck. Ready to go? Team Tempo! <laughs> Keep going, mate. Keep no, going. no, that's, Keep going. that's all I got. Oh, okay. That's all I got. Yeah. That's it.